Okay. <clears throat> it looks like we are live. All right. Couple of adjustments here. Sweet. Okay. How is everyone doing today? Thank you so much for joining me on this fine Friday. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. My name is Jason Levine, and uh, in today's brief live stream, continuing our theme of this week, one topic, one function, one application, going to very quickly show you a very cool, somewhat hidden feature in Adobe Audition that will allow you to automatically create markers, or more importantly, marker regions, like markup phrases and dialogue, which allow you a whole bunch of flexible options where you can separate out the different sections of a dialogue track or perhaps just reorganize copy if you're creating a commercial or voiceover. It's just a really fast way of going through dialogue rather than you going through highlighting and marking sections independently. So it's just one of these cool little hidden things. It's really easy to use. It's a couple of options that can kind of improve the experience. But um, ultimately, this is something that I think is really, really cool and can be very useful for most editors out there. So as always, we've, uh, we've got uh, chats running in Facebook, Twitter, Periscope, and on YouTube. So always nice to see all of you. Hello, Osman from Turkey. Asif, how are you? Eden Lane, Twin Verhoeven, Beaufort Williams, Kevin Ham, Mubashar. Great to see everybody. Okay, and Facebook chat's going super fast. All right, we dropping some frames there? Okay, looks all right. All right, so let's go ahead and get started here and uh, I'll switch over my screen. And we're going to be working in the diagnostics panel today. Now, what's interesting about the diagnostics panel, if you've gone in here or followed, I've shown this in different live streams before, uh, is that typically I've shown things like declipper, so how to remove digitally clipped signals. Hey, hey, Desiree, how are you? Um, or the declicker, how to remove clicks, digital clicks, any kind of intermittent clicks can be removed from there. What's up, Terry White? Um, you can also delete silence from here, which is also particularly useful, sometimes with voiceover, and maybe if we have time at the end, I'll show you that. But the one that I wanna focus on is this one here, Mark Audio. And again, if you're doing any kind of assembly of dialogue, I do a lot of voiceovers for Adobe. So a lot of times I'll take, I'll do a voiceover, read the copy in, and then sometimes I just wanna change the timing of how I said things. So this is a really easy way to just mark all the sections of the dialogue, and then I can split them apart, do things with them afterwards. It just makes the process a lot easier if I want to kind of recompose or just reconfigure um, my voiceover copy or whatever it is. So we're gonna focus on using Mark Audio here. And what I have inside, I've got two examples. Uh, these are some voiceovers that I did last summer or perhaps last fall for the um, 2019 release of uh, Creative Cloud. So let's take a quick listen to this first one here. This was on some of our new motion graphics, uh, probably motion graphics template options. I can't remember exactly. <laughs> so let's take a quick listen to this, all right? Here's the, the raw, untouched recording. Bring your video storytelling to a new level with enhanced motion graphics capabilities in the latest release of Creative Cloud. Create visualizations of data and trends in your video projects right inside the Premiere Pro timeline using data-driven motion graphics templates created in After Effects. Okay, so you can kind of get the idea there. A uh, couple more shouts here. All right. Amsis, what's up? All right. Danielle, Buonasera, Rogelio, very nice to see you. Tyrone from Ottawa, Boy Tricky, Ali Khan, great to see you as well. All right, hey, David Lewis and Vikas. Okay, so uh, here we have different sections of this copy that I read. And like I said, what I would like to do is mark it up so that I can adjust the timing, perhaps if I'm editing this against video. Now, again, um, to mark up, you know, there's only maybe 10 or 12 paragraphs here. It's not that big of a deal, but it surely is easier if I can do it automatically rather than having to come in here manually and make a marker and hit the M key and then come over here and do it and this and this and this. I mean, it's just it's just more clicks than I feel like doing. <laughs> and sometimes that's what it's about. I just don't I just don't feel like it. I would rather have a more automated way to do something like that. What is up Stephanie Reed? Always good to see you. Always editing. What are you rendering out today? Let's see. Listening to the new Jonas Brothers song. <laughs> I did hear about the launch of it. I must admit I haven't heard it yet. All right, so up in the diagnostics panel, we've got Mark Audio, and you've got 
two buttons here at the top, scan and settings. Well, as always, because I like to fill you with detailed info in these live streams, we're not just gonna scan just yet. I wanna go into the settings dialog here because this, this is kind of essential to understand how this all works. So you'll notice that it has a define silence section in here and a define audio section. And what that means is, what does this interpret as silence? It means signal that falls below minus 42 dB, which is fairly quiet in most of your recordings, even if you're doing them natively at 16 bit, your noise floor is usually gonna be around minus 60 ish, all right? So minus 42 might be maybe a little hotter to define silence. Sometimes even we might trail off into the minus 40s. So, but we'll get back to that. And then, so it's signal that's below minus 42 dB for more than 140 milliseconds. Okay, now that's, that's pretty short, right? That's a little more than a 10th of a second. But when you think about how you read copy or voice uh, books on tape or whatever they call them now, books on stream, I don't know. Um, yeah, I mean, we probably pause about, you know, three tenths of a second, you know, half a second is a bit long, a tenth of a second is a bit too short. So this is kind of sort of in the middle of that one tenth, three tenths. The idea being that you should understand what this is doing in terms of how it's detecting silence. And then the opposite of that, how it's defining audio. Well, signal above minus 50. Again, we could probably bump that up a little to maybe minus 40 so that we don't capture some of the like little glottal sounds that you sometimes make or mouse clicks, but minus 50 is okay. But it's defining audio for more than 25 milliseconds. That's a really short duration. So I believe that's the default. We're probably gonna modify this, but without modifying anything, first I wanna show you this button here because find levels automatically scans your audio and figures out where the silent parts are and where the audio parts are basically defining those thresholds, the signal above and below. So this is really useful and you're gonna wanna run this pretty much every time you open this up. So if I click on find levels, it's going to do just that. Now notice it doesn't adjust the for more than sections. It only adjusts the threshold, the signal thresholds. But those are usually, for the most part, uh, pretty accurate. Again, sometimes, Based on the amplitude of the file in question, you may wanna manually adjust that, and I'll show you how you can figure that out. So just with the default settings here, and I'm very concerned about that defining audio for more than 25 milliseconds. Now that we've found the levels though, let's go ahead and scan, all right? And when I scan it, it finds 14 sections. Okay, well, that's not, that's not terrible. Um, so let's go ahead and mark all of those sections, but it doesn't look like there's 14 paragraphs though, right? Okay, so let's go ahead and mark those. And when I do that, what you'll see is that it absolutely marked all of the audio. And if we go into our markers panel here, and hold on, let me just, uh, I'm gonna scoot this up a little bit so that you can, I'll scroll it if, ha if I have to. So like here's section one, bring your video storytelling to a new level. Brilliantly marked. Section two, create visual Section three, using data-driven mode. Simply drag Section four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, well, I'm sorry, I s clicked in there to rename it, didn't mean to do that. 11, 12, 13, 14. Well, what do you know? It was 14 sections and it did it perfectly, even with the default of defining for more than 25 milliseconds. Now, how did that exactly work? Well, again, the signal had to be above minus 66. And when we look in the quiet sections here, note that my my uh, meters, I'm measuring, if I zoom in here, I don't know if you can, can see this. All right, minus 90, 96, what is that what it is? Yeah, 96 dB range uh, is where I'm at with these. So again, you can really very clearly see Perfect. when I stop talking, how quickly stuff goes away. Now it's very likely that I probably applied a noise gate to this, which in fact I, I definitely did as I'm looking at this audio here. So applying a noise gate, which I showed earlier this week, is actually a very good practice when you're trying to automatically mark because then your silence is really silent. And the fact that, you know, audio is for more than 25 milliseconds in this example, it just happens to work perfectly. So what can I tell you? It marked everything perfectly. Every section it caught perfectly, brilliantly, no changes needed, done. Now, once that happens, again, I could bring this into the multi-track. I could pull those mark sections around or if I wanted to do something like export each of those marker sections as individual clips 
From within the markers panel, you'll see that you have that option here. Export audio of selected range markers to separate files, all right? This is also particularly useful, not that anybody's burning CDs so much these days. Is anyone burning CDs? I'd be very curious. Um, you do have a CD burning option. In fact, no one ever really sees this, but file new CD layout. So you can actually author CDs from within Audition. Um, how do you author CDs? Well, you have to make regions, right? You have to mark uh, each of the pieces of audio in your file, and then you change the cue type to what is called a CD track, all right? So you can actually do that. So again, in terms of how it's detecting silence and things, when you have absolute silence or using a gate, oh, Veselkov, you wish you had had this before you edited a 50-minute track? Oh. <laughs> Sorry, I was a day late and a dollar short for you, my friend. I apologize there. Um, but now you know. So uh, it's just, it's really good to use noise gates for, you know, again, really silencing those in-between sections. So in any case, this happened to work perfectly. With the defaults, find levels, scan, mark all, done. You are not always going to get that lucky. I'm a little impressed that it got it all entirely, frankly, <laughs> in the first try. <laughs> you can see my genuine surprise, like, uh, did it nail it all? Surely there aren't 14 sections? Oh, but there were, all right? So it did an amazing job. That's it, right? That's, that's, that's what I call Adobe magic, because you just never know with this kind of stuff. You know, anything automated, right? Normally there's some manual tweaking that usually has to happen. Okay, well, let's take a look at another one. And now right away, you can see this one audio wise, level wise, this one looks to be a little bit different. There is no noise gate applied to this one. How do I know? Well, when I take a look at this file, again, for you audio nerds who've been watching me forever, you see all this gunk in between spoken word here, all right, little background noise. It's not a lot, it's not significant background noise, but it's background noise nonetheless. By comparison, if we go to the one we just did, same zoom level, notice in between sections, it's black. There is nothing, there is no noise, no nothing in between spoken passages. So again, right away, this one a little more challenging in terms of the level setting and perhaps because of the, the duration. So it's probably gonna pick up a lot of my, <gasps> all those little things and mark them as, as regions. I'm guessing. I'm guessing that's what's gonna happen. So let's see. I've been known to be wrong before. <laughs> I'm gonna click on find levels, okay? And for this one, it readjusted the silence. So it's saying, okay, real silence is below 73. Now again, that's, that's almost a little too low because this whole bit right here, I don't know if you can hear that. That's like my mic on the table and it's, it's me moving about and doing things. Forgetting that little breath at the end there, let's take a look at our levels. Okay, this is where this stuff becomes kind of important. Uh, you can see that, you know, this is basically, because this is well above minus 70, I already know it's gonna mark this section as, as audio, right? It's above minus 66, all right? So, and it's not below minus 73. So it's totally gonna mark this. But let's just leave the levels where they are for right now. And again, the more than 25 millisecond thing, I think that's gonna burn us a little. Now wait, before I do this, let me get rid of the two markers that are in there. Oh, those are lingering somehow. All right, find the levels again, let it do its thing, scan it. All right, 15 sections. All right, now if I just were to quickly look at this, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So it's definitely considering six other things as valid audio sections. Let's go ahead and mark all. And as I guessed, as expected, it created way more sections than we needed, okay? So first and foremost, now this one you can't help, right? <clears throat> right, that's loud, so obviously that's legit. I mean, we would just erase that marker, but it thinks that that's something. This, because the audio was at minus 45, so it was above minus 66 and not below minus 73. So that little boom of the microphone caused a region. Okay, we don't want that. Here it is again. Those look like glottal sounds. Okay, next one, legit. You can also add next one, legit, for professional work. But then we have 
Again, minus 39, we have me banging the mic or the table there. More banging of the table. <laughs> a breath. You can also add multiple Lumetri effects. And then this, and you get the idea. And you can see it added a bunch of other things. One, because it was just a little too aggressive, all right? So if I, let's just show how you might modify something like this. So first of all, I'm gonna delete all of these markers. Now, you may have to tweak this from time to time. As I said, it's not always perfect. It's an automatic process. We're trying to make things faster. Once you kind of get to understand and look at audio and look at your spoken word or dialogue as it's recorded, you'll get a pretty good idea of how this stuff should work. And really the key is finding that balance between that threshold, but also the duration of the audio or the silence. And I really, 25 milliseconds is just pretty darn short. Okay, so let's just take a look. Stations, the new display color management feature in Premiere Pro can automatically detect what display you're using and apply the correct color transform. All right, so I was looking at kind of the average, right? Notice I have uh, show valleys selected. So this is showing you, um, uh, and we have dynamic peaks here as opposed to static peaks. But showing the valleys is kind of showing you where the average amplitude of the audio is falling. So I was hitting kind of into the mid 30s there, which probably tells me that I want to define audio above minus 40 ish, okay, approximately. And I probably want it for more than 25 milliseconds, particularly because this stuff here kept getting marked and we don't want that. And we already know that that signal, you can look at it right here, look, the average is minus 63, but it's peaking out at minus 36. So technically that's not silence. And technically it is audio because it's above minus 66, all right? So let's try and make two little tweaks here. I'm gonna set the, th the signal threshold. Let's do, it's gotta be above, what did I say? What did this just go to? See, that's hitting at minus 39, that's also minus 36. Let, let's, let's be a little more aggressive here. I'm just gonna go for it. Let's try like minus 30, all right? And that's just eyeballing where my level meters were hitting, all right? So audio is signal that's above minus 30. Maybe I'll even do minus 31, all right? I still may pick up one of those little things, but we'll, we'll see. And then let's do the duration. Let's do 190 milliseconds, all right? So we're gonna scan. Now, what do we see? Aha! Seven sections detected. Before it was, what, 15 or 17, approximately. Let's go ahead and scan. I just did that, rather. Let's go ahead and mark. And now, I think we're in business. So again, now the first one, I can't help that, that that's my user. I left that in there. <clears throat> so it, that's audio, that's legit. But now, all of the talking sections. You can also add one. one or professional workstation. Two. You can also add more. Three. Or professional workstation. Four. You can also add five, notice I did multiple takes of that read, for professional workstation six, okay? Now, one thing that I'm noticing here, where, uh, again, I'd probably do a little bit of a tweak in terms of the pickup, it's for professional, for, for the right. It didn't quite catch the beginning of my consonant sound there. So this is where I may actually lower this even a bit more, make it at minus 40, okay? I think the duration's gonna be okay. Let's mark this again. Let's scan it again. Okay, now it found nine sections. So notice, again, just by adjusting that signal threshold, it probably added another marker here is what I'm guessing, and perhaps one right here. I'm thinking that's where it made up the extra two, sec extra two sections. Let's go ahead and see. No, oh, and it, it actually picked this up right here instead. Okay, but as I look now, now you can see, if we take a look at this marker here, it caught the very beginning. For professional, for professional. Okay, for so prof by adjusting the, um, the audio signal definition threshold from minus 31 to minus 40, and I guarantee if we went to minus 36, we'd find that sweet spot and we wouldn't get any of those unnecessary little bits like this piece right here, this little thing right there. Now that's really, you know, big deal, right? Okay, there's two that it picked up, two little regions. We're not gonna use those anyway. Everything else was perfect, all right? But you get the idea. Little subtle tweaks can make a fundamental difference in the success of the marking. If you're clipping the beginnings of your consonants, that probably means that your audio threshold, it's it's too high, you need to bring it down, right? Because a lot of times you you sort of, it's it's momentary, I mean, it's it's milliseconds, but there's a millisecond of when you, 
high. It actually, your audio, it does in fact ramp up very quickly. Well, this is so sensitive and because we're talking about a fairly short duration, the other thing we could have done is if we say for more than say 80 milliseconds, or in this case, let's do 95, you know, to be, to be exactly half or something, um, that can also restore some of those attack transients, right? And actually, I'm, I'm curious here. Let me see if we, if we do, let's go back to minus 31. I'm just playing around now. And let's do 95 milliseconds. Let's scan. Well, I can't be, oh, sorry, I'm on, I'm, it's highlighted there. Scan, okay, look at that. Yeah, we're back to seven sections again, okay? Now let's see though, if, um, if our attacks, if our transients were clipped, let's see. Yeah, they're a little clipped here. So what that's telling me, right, is that minus 31, well, hold on, let me listen though. For profession, for prof yeah. For, pro for, pro for see, we're, we're missing the, for this. Right? So we needed to, and, and by the way, where is, the, what's the level on that? Yeah, see, it's it's averaging minus 28, but really you can you can see it's quieter. So again, it, it's probably around minus, minus 34 or 32. So maybe, maybe minus 35 is the secret sauce there, but we solved it by going to, again, minus 40. Um, it didn't make a difference if we changed the duration in this case, it still clipped uh, the transient, but by changing the duration, we didn't get any of those little bits, right? So the audio has to be more than 95 milliseconds. You get the idea. So cool, so flexible, really easy. Sometimes, like in the case here with this one, it just did it right away. We didn't have to do any manual tweaking, default settings, did it all, it worked brilliantly. It was noise gated, it was fully clean and produced, um, edited. This one, this was completely raw, no noise gate, no additional editing, lots of noise, glottal sounds, clicks, bumping the table and the mic. So we had to tweak this one a little bit more. But once you get the idea how to tweak these things, it's very easy to visually identify what you need to do to make your results better. And again, just keep on working that much more effectively. All right, so that is it for the stream today. You're gonna to take a couple of questions. I meant to say at the beginning, let's hold all the questions till the end. I forgot to do that, sorry. Uh, so let's go first over to Facebook. What's up, pal? All right, Gabriel from Brazil, Carlos. All right. I'm seeing some wows, nice. Zara, Juan Arenales, Daniel Vargas, saludos. Jason Williamson, can you use this to mark audio then bring those markers into Premiere to automate cleaning up a long interview, removing off-camera questions and long pauses? Um, uh, so the markers themselves, if you save the audio, there is by default a checkbox that's enabled. Hold on, I'm bouncing back over so you can see. Uh, there is a checkbox that will save the markers as part of the metadata. So Premiere will see those markers uh, and then, but the thing is you'd still have to ultimately sort of IO mark around them in Premiere if you wanted to adjust timing. Um, you'd probably be better off doing it here on like sending, sending it from Premiere to Audition, marking it and then doing any kind of rearrangement that way. Um, but the markers will show up in the file. So they do become embedded in the metadata of the file and Premiere will respect them. What you do with them afterwards, but yeah, it's not like in terms of automating it after the fact in Premiere, maybe not so easily. Okay. Um, give it a try though. You never, you never know. It, maybe it'll do, I'm not exactly sure what you want, but it, it could, it could theoretically do that. Uh, okay, let's take another question here. All right. Marshall. How do you search for previous web streams? D clicks. <laughs> well, so uh, you will find them all in the video tab here on the Premiere Pro Facebook page. There are many on the After Effects Facebook page. There are many on the Creative Cloud Facebook page and our Creative Cloud YouTube channel. Uh, where the declicker one is, I can actually tell you. That will be on my YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash Jason Levine video. I'm writing it in the chat right now. And 
uh, I have several videos in a playlist called Audio 101 that are based around um, noise reduction. And de-clicking is one of the elements that is featured there. Sorry, I'm typing this with one hand, one finger here. All right, I just posted that into the chat. So Marshall, you'll be able to find them there. All right, let's go over to Facebook. Jayesa, hey, F. Sminick, good afternoon, how are you? Okay, no questions over there. Any questions coming in on Periscope? No. <laughs> well, just like that, there you go, all right. Okay, well, sometimes, you know, there's just nothing more to say. That's the nice thing about this feature. It's easy, uh, it works nicely. You know, as I said, I'm a, I'm a big fan of, uh, of just getting stuff done quickly. And uh, oftentimes that's really all you have to do is just leverage some of these automatic features here. All right. So that's it for today. I hope everyone has a fantastic weekend. Thank you very much for watching. Again, you'll be able to watch the replays on Facebook, on the Pre, uh, Premiere Pro Facebook page, on Twitter Periscope, and on my YouTube channel. So... Uh, I will, I won't see you next week. I will be at our HQ, so I won't be streaming next week, but, uh, be back the following week. So until then, have a great weekend. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world, and we'll see you again next time. Thank you again for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.